Hello guys, this is Coding Code and this is the fourth video in the lecture series of Digital Search. And in this video, we are going to talk about the implementation part of Digital Search. That's how they are implemented. Let's see. So as you can see, this is a structure in which uh, we have a single connected component and it represents a single set. So how we are going to represent it? is we can represent this structure using simple uh, a, a simple array uh, which is known as a parent array so uh, as you can see all we need to store is the element uh, to which a specific node points to for example node 4 points to node 5 so all we have to store uh, what is the node to which uh, some particular node points or in other words who is the parent of each node so if you see this is the implementation of this structure so since we have five nodes so all we needed is an array of length five so since node one points to node three that is why at the index one we have three which indicates node one is pointing to three node two points to itself that is why at index two we have two node three points to two that is why at index 3 we have 2, node 4 points to 5 and node 5 points to, points to 2. So we can see that how easily we can implement this structure and how to know who is the parent of, of this set. Uh, so uh, the node which points to itself is the parent of this set. So we can see that uh, 1 points to 3 but 2 points to 2 that is 2 points to itself that is why Two is the parent of this structure so this is how we can know who is the parent of a specific set so let's see how uh, we can implement the find function as we have already seen that the find, find function is used to return the set or the uh, uh, sorry to return the unique ID to which the element belongs for example find and would return the parent of the set in which and belongs for example if i am running a query on find 4 then find 4 would return 2 because 4 belongs to a set whose parent is 2 so this is a pseudo code so let's see how it would work so when you call find 4 what happens is that since this is an infinite loop so we will enter into this loop and we see if the current node points to itself this is the parent point uh, uh, parent uh, array so it would tell to whom n points to so we are checking if n points to itself so since 4 does not point to itself that is why we would not return n else we would update the value of n as parent of n so parent of n is 5 so n would become 5 so n, n becomes 5 now we will again enter into, uh, enter into this loop and see if 5 points to itself so since we can see that 5 points to 2 so this condition doesn't hold so it would again make n equal to parent of 5 that is 2 so n would become now 2 now we again enter this loop and we'll see if 2 points to 2 yes 2 points to 2 so this way we know that 2 is the parent uh, parent so we would return and that is 2 so we return 2 so this is the pseudo code for iterative code and uh, there also exists the recursive function for find so let's see what's the recursive function uh, so this is the recursive function so what we do is we check this is the base condition of the recursive function so we check if n points to itself if n points to itself then we know that this is the parent that is why we return n otherwise what we would we would do we would, uh, we would query we would query on the parent of current node so we would move up into the tree and apply find function on that node so whatever that return uh, would be the parent of the whole whole structure and we would return that to understand it let's see an example so first we call find 4 so 
since this condition doesn't hold as 4 doesn't point to itself that's why we again call find function but with value 5 because parent of 4 is 5 so what would happen here is that the execution of find 4 would pause for some time until and unless find 5 is completely executed and as uh, since it calls find 5 so uh, so find 5 would be called and as soon as find 5 completes its execution then only find 4 would complete its execution as it has to return the value that would be returned by find 5 so find 5 would be completed before find 4 so uh, we are at find 5 now we see that if 5 points to itself no find 5 or sorry 5 doesn't point to itself so we would not return 5 else we would again make a recursive call to find function but this time with value 2 because parent of 5 is 2 so we would make a call to find 2 uh, again what would happen is that find 5 would be paused for some time until another find 2 completes its execution as find 5 has called find 2 so we would move into find 2 we see if 2 points to 2 yes 2 points to 2 so from this point we would return n and that is 2 so from this point we would return 2 so return value would go to the point from where find 2 was called so find 2 was called here so return value that is 2 would be replaced by this so uh, this this function called find 2 would be replaced by return value that is 2 so what happens is that uh, find 5 would return 2 from this place and find 5 would return 2 to that function who called find 5 and find 5 was called by find 4 at this place so to uh, find 5 this uh, statement would be replaced by 2 as find 5 is returning 2 so at this place we would have 2 and finally find 4 would complete its execution and return 2 to the function who called find 4 uh, so this way the recursive function completes its execution so now only thing that we have to look now is union function so we have already seen that what union function does is it takes two inputs a and b and merge the two two sets if a and b belong to two different sets so uh, it what what it does is it takes the set in which a belongs and takes the set in which b belongs if they are they belong to the same set it does nothing and if they belong to different sets it simply merges them so first we would have to find the parent of a and parent of b uh, why would we do this because to check if a and b belong to the same set we have to know know uh, what is their parent id uh, and I have already to, uh, already told you that parent ID is unique to all sets. So first we find who is the parent of A. So parent of A would be stored in A and parent of B would be stored in B. If A is equal to B, that is they both have the same parent ID, that is they belong to the same set. If they belong to the same set, you cannot merge them. So what we have to do is simply return because we have to do nothing. Otherwise, uh, what we do is we change one of the parent pointers of the two parents. Uh, we have two parents and we change one of the pointers to point to other parent. So what I am doing here, I am altering the parent pointer of A and making it equal to B. So now uh, earlier A was pointing to itself that is parent of A was A. Now parent of A would be pointing to B. So simply make changes in one of the uh, parents or parent pointer and this would complete the merge operation so this way we have seen we can complete or uh, we can write the code for for find function we have seen the implementation of find function using recursive and iterative method and we have seen how we can merge two sets 
uh, using the union operation and we have seen how the uh, the disjoint sets are implemented using simple array so you can see that their implementation is very very easy and they are easy to understand and implement as well so i hope you have enjoy, uh, enjoyed this video so please like comment and share as you know this is my only motivation to work harder thank you